Welcome to 12 Days of Creativity, a music production challenge that helps you finish more music and gets you creating. I'll guide you through crafting a full track in the next 12 videos, blending technical insights with confidence boosting tips. More info on how to enter, check out the link below. One person will also have a chance to win amazing gift bundle. Everybody who finishes the challenge will also get some amazing production related treats and whoever is the most active sharing their process in social media will get a surprise gift. Big thank you also to the sponsors of this series. Now let's get creating. Here we go, the first day of this challenge. We're gonna start with chords. First, I'm gonna show you a couple tips to inspire you. And then I'm gonna show you what I did with my challenge song. So if you are absolute complete beginner, then I've added some extra material for you below this, this video and also a link to my course, which is basically the similar kind of workflow, but in like really much in details. So tip number one is using a website like this. So this one, Musica, is really, really practical. So Chord Generator, if you're not 100% sure how Chord works, come to here. We can generate here something cool. So example, C, G, A minor, F, or generate chords, C, G, F, G. Okay, perfect. I'm going to write those down. C, G, F, G. And now, if you're not sure how to put them into Ableton Live, we can go here, Chord Finder, go here, and it will show you in the piano, piano roll where everything is. So I have a MIDI track there. I'm gonna go and add a new instrument and let's add Drift because why not? And let's, because Drift is a new one, let's go and find a new cool key sound. Faded keys, that sounds really cool. Let's go and add that. So I'm gonna create like a housey cool uh, sequence. So I'm gonna go and put length four, four bars because this was our chord progression was C, G, F, G, but I'm going to put C7 and maybe F7. Okay, we're going to go C, D, no, C, E, G, and B to add the seventh there. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. Ooh, do, do, do. Lovely. And what we can do now is create a cool like sequence. So what I will do is that I will make sure that it's in 16th grid. Perfect. And now we're going to go and make this three sixteenth note long. And we're just going to duplicate it all the way here. And we're going to extend this last one. And now this is going to give us rhythm. <laughs> it, it's quite, uh, the, the release is quite long. Oh, pianos and keys, there we want to be. Perfect. And we do the same thing. So here are my chords. So creating inversions. So example, let's say that we have this D here. So what we can do is highlight it and then sh hold down shift and go octave lower. And it just adds this really cool. So if we are inverting chords, we can get them to sound a little bit more complex. Or we can add the sevens or nines. So again, if you're not sure where they go, so example, let's add a seven to this G. So we can go here and go G and seven. So we know that now the extra one is the F. So we can add F to this G. So F is there and we can just copy highlight one of these rows and hold down Alt and we can just drag it one lower. And let's add to the G here a ninth. 
So let's go back here and we're gonna go here and we're gonna go ninth. And now we have F and A added. So the A, let's add that there. So we're gonna add, again, we're gonna get one of those, hold down Alt and we're gonna drag it into A. And if we add also the seventh, which was seventh, which is the M, F. Let's see if this sounds better with some piano. Yes! And then we can do some little ones here. We just put little notes here to add some variation. that little bit slow. Velocity down. I'm gonna put the randomize the velocity, highlight them all, randomize. So much better. So that's a good start for our song. Try those tips out. Okay, so here is what I did with my chords. I'm doing this in Ableton Live 12 just because I wanted to uh, explore it a little bit further. Uh, okay, so I started with this instrument. It's a new instrument on Ableton Live 12 called Meld and I went to get a I used actually a preset because I was exploring what kind of presets are there. And it was a good idea because I found this one called Cracked Piano and it has this really cool rain effect. So it sounds like this. And I actually got these chords not from the website but I was in a shower I thought about a melody for the vocal and I was like okay what are the chords for that melody so I created this and I made it actually f uh, eight bars long so that I can create some variation so you can see here I use exactly the same technique that I just taught thirds here where it's like one Dun, 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 dun. And it's really nice with because I used push three to play it and I could use pitch bend uh, MPE with it. D. So if we go to MPE, you can see how much I used MPE here. And that pitch bend that you can hear is that. It's nice though. Adds that smoothness to it. And if you don't have a push three or MPE controller, you can still draw MPE, which is nice. So I started with that. Then I thought, well, that piano didn't really fit really nicely to my track. So I actually added another keys, uh, which is a wavetable. Added some delay, reverb, and this is what we have. Oh, it's actually also a preset. Because I was just exploring different sounds. It sounds really nice, very smooth. And it's exactly the same chord progression. Oh, where is it? But I just made them a little bit shorter. So what you can do is highlight them all and just, just drag them to be shorter. So add adds a little bit that kind of accent to it.
So here is uh, some inspiration for you. So these clips are from my other YouTube channel called I Was Just Thinking. I Was Just Thinking is based on the fact that I am passionate talking about creative confidence and why we feel creative blocks and the more the psychological perspective for creativity and insecurities. So here's a little clip to inspire you and to give you some hope <laughs> in this process. But because we're creatives and because it's normal to want validation, then obviously we want it from who else than our family and friends the most. But the issue is that most likely your family or friends, they are the ones who are most likely not going to give you the validation that you need, at least in the way that you want it. So then that means that we're in this circle of just creating stuff or validating everything that we create by what the people around us say that it's worth. So example, if our mom or dad or siblings or friends, let's say that they don't like certain type of art. Everybody says like, oh, modern art is shit. It's just colors on a, uh, on a, bloody paper and it's not good and all this and this and this and this and what you actually want to make is modern art then there's a bit of a conflict isn't it because you want their acceptance and you want not to come across a bit of a weirdo by making art that your family doesn't like or you start making modern art but then you need to really 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 find their acceptance and explain to them why modern art is great and why why they should love it but the thing is as much as you could ask for other people's love and acceptance for certain things it it's most likely that they're never gonna love it the way that you love it or they might, might never ever give your art the validation or the recognition that you wish to have it and it's not only about genres or it's not only about the type of art you make it's all also about just how it's been given but hope is not all lost. There is ways that we can feel validated, which means then that hopefully it would not affect the art that we make and it wouldn't affect how we create. We wouldn't censor ourselves just to please others. Very rainy here. Also check out my uh, I was just thinking channel from down below. There will be new videos coming a lot there next year. So hopefully this December as well.